just yesterday I received a phone call from a brother who uh, um, is a very well known person to us. Uh, he's a donor of Mercy Mission, mashallah, he gives Mercy Mission some, uh, some charity. And uh, I've known him since I was a young boy, actually. He's an uncle of mine. Uh, I call him uncle, I call everybody an uncle, you know how it is. Um, in Bengali culture, we call anybody who is a family friend an uncle. So he's a family friend, basically. Uh, and I used to play cricket with him when I was a, a younger boy, uh, mashallah, uh, in, in, in Australia. So he called me. Uh, and I was having a chat with him yesterday um, about how his mother had just passed away. Uh, and his mother had just suffered uh, septic shock, basically, and kidney infection. That infection became systemic in the body. And then she went to the ICU. And I had to chat with the ICU doctors about whether we can pull the plug or not. And subhanAllah, it's a very, very distressing thing for a son to have to discuss. And then by Allah's mercy, Allah took her soul away rather than us having to make a decision that we would regret. Uh, I remember Hadith of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in, um, in Adab al-Mufrad of al-Bukhari Rahimahullah. Yeah, um, uh, amazing Hadith. It's a Hadith, it's an Athar actually, it's a narration, authentic narration from uh, Ibn Abbas. That a man came to Ibn Abbas and said, uh, Yeah, Ibn Abbas, um, uh, I killed somebody. Um, so can I repent to Allah? Is there any repentance for me? So Ibn Abbas uh, obviously said, I killed somebody in mistake, you know, by mistake, and uh, is there any repentance for me? So the man said, uh, you know, I, I didn't intend it. I, uh, I want to repent to Allah. So Ibn Abbas thought a little while, and then he looked up the guy, looked, looked, looked at the person and said, uh, oh, so-and-so, have, have you got a mother? Uh, so the man said, no, yeah, Ibn Abbas, I don't, I don't have a mother. So Ibn Abbas looked down in the ground and said, uh, Tayyib, okay, ala kulli hal, repent to Allah, uh, make istighfar and pay the blood money and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive you. So at that point, one of the students of Ibn, Ibn, Ibn Abbas stood up uh, after the man had left and said, Ya Ibn Amr Rasulullah or the uh, son of the uncle of Rasulullah why did you ask whether this man had a mother or not? Uh, and at that point Ibn Abbas said, I do not know of any deed that is more pleasing to Allah than being good to the mother. Yeah? And so the scholars mention in the explanation of this in Adab al-Mufrad, they said that here Ibn Abbas was suggesting to use goodness to the mother as a means to overcome the sin of killing someone. So sometimes we don't really think about how heavy this issue is of being good to parents. We sometimes, you know, really belittle it. We think it's just like, okay, it's just a good deed. All right, it's easy to do. Phone call to my mom might make her happy, but you know, we're complacent with that. Even a uh, a small five, five uh, ringgit gift to my parents could sometimes make them happy. Some sweet you bought on the way, a calendar, you know, a tasbih, uh, a Quran CD, you know, something very simple sometimes make our parents happy. But we don't bother doing it because I think, you know what, it's a, it's a small deed. We glorify other things that are we, you know, we prepare for it, make sure we're going there. And Umrah, we're going to Makkah, Medina for Umrah or Hajj. We, you know, we really prepare very hard. But for being good to parents, we don't realize how grave and how amazingly uh, important and heavy the good deed is of being good to parents, subhanAllah. I remember our Shaykh uh, Ahmed Rashid al-Ruhayli, uh, one of the main students of Shaykh Shanqiti, and uh, so he was a, a great teacher for me, mashallah, he taught me so many things other than just knowledge. I learned manners from him and many things, the good manners from him, mashallah. And uh, the Sheikh, uh, I remember when his father passed away, uh, his father had a long battle with cancer and he passed away, rahimahullah. When he passed away, um, the Sheikh, you know, cried and he called me on the phone. And he said, uh, I read uh, in Tafsir al-Tabari uh, a narration uh, from the Israeliyat, but authenticated by Tabari in, the tafsir, in his Tafsir, that a man used to be good to his parents 
uh, and whilst he was good to his parents Allah was good to him as well because he was good to his parents and then when his parents passed away Allah sent an angel down to him and the angel told him oh so and so Allah was being good to you because of your goodness to your parents now that your parents have passed away seek another means of being good and coming closer to Allah so Ya Akhwati, when we actually have our parents, we have the strongest way or one of the strongest way to seek forgiveness from Allah. We have one of the strongest way to make Allah happy. We have one of the strongest way to earn our Jannah. Wallahi, it is so easy when we have our parents. When they pass away, it gets difficult. What good deed can we actually do that can remove a massive sin that we did? What good deed? Because that's what you're meant to do. After you do a bad deed, you follow it up with a good deed. So what good deed can you do that can, you can follow up? I mean, the guy had killed somebody. Imagine that. So what good deed can you do that can overcome a massive sin that you've done? Wallahi, if you miss out on the chance of being good to your parents whilst you still have them with you, well, that's a, it's a big loss. It's a massive loss. So don't do that. Ever since I learned that lesson myself, I made up my mind that I'm going to make my parents, one of my most stable ways to make Allah Azzawajal happy. So every day I give them a phone call. That's all, all, my, all, my, all my parents need, just a phone call. They don't want money from me. They don't want food from me. They don't even want me to look after them as yet. Alhamdulillah, my father's still strong. All they want is just for me to be in touch with them. When's the last time you called your parents? When's the last time you, know, you bought a gift to them? When's the last time you made them happy? Rasulullah said, Very in the Rida Allah, we Rida Al Walidain, was Sakhat Allah, we Sakhat Al Walidain. Hadith is authentic. What did he say? Verily, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gets happy when your parents are happy, and Allah gets angry when your parents are angry. As simple as that. In the Hadith of Rasulullah, a Sahabi was passing away, and the, and the Prophet said, say, say La ilaha illallah. He couldn't say La ilaha illallah. Why not? Because his mom was angry with him. Mom was angry with him. It was authentically reported that, that the Prophet was very afraid at that point. He went, he sent the Sahaba to look out. The Sahaba went everywhere looking out and they found the parent, the mom of this particular Sahabi and she was angry. What was she angry at? The only fact is that that man used to prefer his wife over his mom. That's it. That's all it was. And that was enough for her to get angry and there was enough for Allah to get angry at him. Subhanallah. So please don't make your parents angry at you for Allah's sake, don't. The hadith of Rasulullah SAW states that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not look at three people on the day of judgment. The hadith is authentic in Bukhari. One of them is the youth, the one who is not jealous over his women. The second is the one who, a man who dresses like a woman, a woman who behaves like a man or dresses like a man. Right? And number three is the aqun li walidayh, the one who disobeys his parents. Yeah? And in one authentic hadith, a man came to the Prophet ﷺ from Yemen and said, Ya Rasulullah, I've come to join battle with you. He said, how have you left your parents? So he said, I left them crying. So he told them, go back and make them laugh just like you made them cry. And even a battle, jihad was not more stronger than the right of the parent on you. I asked my Shaykh, Shaykh, I've got three brothers, I've got two brothers. So I don't think I, I'm required. And Alhamdulillah, my two brothers are required. So my Shaykh reminded me, saying, what if you are the Yusuf of your father? What if you are like Yusuf was to Yaqub? It didn't matter that he had 11 other children. It doesn't matter you have other brothers and sisters. You are the one. You need to look after your parents. You need to be good to them. It doesn't matter that there are other brothers and sisters. Yeah, it's your responsibility to look after them and be kind and merciful to them, inshallah. Because it didn't matter that you had other brothers when you were young. They looked after you just like as if you were the only child. So if that is the case, you look after your parents just like, the, you're like, just like you are the only support that, you, that they have. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us of those who are good to our parents, who earn Allah's favor and mercy by being good to them. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make our children, make our children merciful to us just like our parents were merciful to us, inshallah. Zakumullah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.